Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing some lost PLA casting and a few experiments. This is brass, used plumbing fittings straight from the scrapyard. I've never cast in brass before and when I was thinking what to make, all I could think of was brass monkeys. So I headed over to Thingiverse and I found this fantastic monkey design. But I wanted to make a few adjustments, so I turned once again to Fusion 360. I've simplified some areas, made others thicker and given him a cheeky smile. Just like last time, I'm going to be using the casting tree method, so I wanted each monkey to be quite small. Now a few people have asked me why I keep printing my own bases like this. Well traditionally, casting flasks like this one use a rubber base. A wax sprue is pushed inside this and then wax patterns are attached to it to form the casting tree. However, as I'm using the lost PLA method, it occurred to me that I could print my own base which would melt away in the process anyway. By doing this, I can position the sprue anywhere I want, giving me design flexibility. Talking of which, a few months back I was reading John Campbell's Complete Casting Handbook. I wondered at the time if it would be possible to apply the tapered sprue and pouring basin he describes in his book with the standard casting tree. So that's exactly what I did. Here you should be able to see that this sprue is tapered. Also, the pouring basin has a ring around the sprue, creating the lip John Campbell describes. This lip is believed to trap debris and steady the pour rate, whilst the tapered sprue is believed to alleviate porosity. I decided on eight monkeys in total, and whilst printing these, I began thinking about PLA removal. During lost PLA, the filament melts away to leave a void in the plaster encasement. So I tried to design my sprues to make this removal as complete as possible. The problem with the monkey design is that it doesn't evacuate fully. However it's orientated, it still traps some PLA. Whilst this boils away, it might leave ash behind, which could potentially spoil the process. So I decided to test the theory by making four sprues that will definitely trap the PLA in this fashion. I then added extra material to four other patterns so that they would drain fully, leaving no PLA behind. Now the question is, will this make any difference to the castings? Closer inspection of the prints showed these flaws in the printing process. The small holes, which can be seen on all the prints, would show up as flaws in the casting. To remedy these flaws and smooth away any printer lines, I lightly sanded the surfaces, then rubbed sprue wax all over them. I used it like a crayon, and this fills in the floors, leaving cast-friendly wax behind. I then sanded it a little bit more, to smooth the wax and push the excess into the printer grooves. Any excess is then easily cleaned away. With the tree made, the metal flask was added. However, the seal isn't perfect. So I melted some sprue wax around this, then added some masking tape. The investment plaster was mixed and poured inside. 
This is then cooked according to the manufacturer's guidelines, burning away the excess PLA and preparing the plaster. With the flask still in my homemade electric foundry, it was time to melt the brass. The metal flask was taken from my foundry, rotated 180 degrees and placed on my homemade vacuum system. You can see the plaster is still glowing red hot inside. The pour went well. You can see how the molten brass circled the raised section in the pouring basin before cascading down into the tapered sprue. I gave this half an hour, then plunged the flask into a bucket of water. The resulting castings looked promising, but the bottom looked horrible. After a good scrub in some soapy water, there was still a lot of trapped plaster and there was also a lot of scale. Now this is probably the result of using poor quality scrap metal rather than high quality ingot, but beggars can't be choosers, so I cut the patterns from the tree for easier cleaning. After even more scrubbing and a couple of hours soaking some vinegar, they didn't look that much better if I'm honest. So that meant it was time to do a little sanding. And here you go. Yes, they could still use a little more work. I've been quite stingy with the sanding as I'm always in a hurry to move on to the next experiment but the results are quite pleasing. These castings are about as small as I can comfortably go now, as I don't have any tools to work with anything smaller. For example, I had to use a fine sewing needle to scrape the plaster from the eyes. But despite being so small, Lost PLA has done it again. And if you're wondering about the PLA removal experiment, well, I cleaned up one of each sort, and I challenge you to spot a difference. There's no apparent nasties that I can see, other than my lazy sanding, as I admit there's still a good deal of work needs to be done. But honestly, I can see no difference between the two. I can't be certain whether the tapered sprue and pouring basin altered things, but they are a nice little extra that's easy to accommodate with the PLA method. So there you have it guys. Brass monkeys and tapered sprues. Whee! 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like it. Please subscribe if you haven't already and look out for my other videos on my YouTube channel. Please do send in your comments and questions as it's always great to hear from you guys. So that's it for now, take care and thanks for watching.